okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to convince you that violence can promote democracy and is promoting democracy as we see it happening in Egypt right now. Um, and after this, after this speech, uh, I think you'll see that actually the government team is fairly winning the debate thus far. Okay, so let's talk about violence and democracy. Representation is not part of the constitution. So it becomes a legitimate means to gain this kind of democracy when your peaceful avenues of achieving this message, your peaceful avenues of attaining democracy are stifled or oppressed. So when the, they clearly don't understand what oppression is, and they clearly don't understand what is happening in Egypt right now. So what we see is an increasingly repressive regime in Egypt that may have been democratically elected, but they are increasingly taking away people's ability to uh, peacefully protest and have uh, kind of like this more peaceful means of communicating democratic ends. This is what we see increasingly happening. Peaceful protest isn't being supported or um, encouraged by the government. We see that they're actually trying to suppress these, kind of, these kinds of uh, advocacy, these kinds of discourse. We think that is really problematic. So we have this group violent means as the only means left for them to achieve. And we see this by not by preemptively striking uh, like government offices, but by responsibly targeting government offices, by responsibly targeting government officials as part of a participant in this oppressive regime. This is what we see coming out. So we think that it is legitimate to target a repressive regime when that regime is not allowing you to be fully self-expressive. So Label, putting like a label on your box, like, oh, you are elected, therefore you are automatically democratic. We don't think that is really true to characterize the regime as in Egypt. We don't think that it is acceptable for a government to be impervious to criticism because they like subdue the media or control the media, because they impose curfews, because they impose uh, armies on the streets. We don't really think that that's actually democracy. We think that we allow, uh, one second, we allow groups, we think it's legitimate for groups to communicate their message going against this democracy. The black block with the same means. This can only perpetuate the cycle of violence. Okay. We are okay verdicts that violence is sometimes justified. We accept that burden, we've been quite explicit in doing so. We think that violence is not justified if you have legitimate peaceful means, or like viable peaceful means to communicate your message, but when violence becomes acceptable is when those peaceful means are oppressed. When you are not allowed to go about those peaceful means of communicating your message, that is when violence is justified. I don't know how I think that any more people are going to help. You're going to have to prove to me why violence is never justified in the condition when your peaceful avenues are, are being suppressed. You're going to have to prove that and you haven't done that so far. So good luck uphold when you have a government that is trying to represent your people. So essentially, representation comes about when you allow people to act in as free of ways possible in living out their lives. And this is what we see, this is why we support liberty so much. Because only through maximizing individual liberty is when you allow people to fulfill their lives, you allow people to find uh, the path that a government is representative of, the, of its people when it doesn't allow these liberties to happen. When it doesn't allow individuals to find their own path through life, we don't allow individuals to express themselves as they see fit, to put value upon their own culture and what they see as their important culture. So, yes, perhaps Morsi was elected as like an Islamic representative, but we don't think that Islamic policies doesn't actually represent the Islamic population. We think that that is problematic because what you're actually doing is reducing people's liberty and reducing people's freedom to express their culture, how they see fit, and other forms of expression as well, which we've already talked about. So we think of Egyptians' views because you seem very willing to give them a lot of power, especially political power, in Egypt. Okay, so the Black Bloc itself may not be like representative of every single individual in Egyptian society. That's okay. What we see them as is a representative of, of a group that is willing to protest against a repressive regime. We choose the Black Bloc's protest and bringing back democracy to Egypt where it is sorely lacking rather than allowing a regime to carry on unchallenged. Yes, we think that the Black Bloc is more legitimate in these type of actions. We support that. Finally, democracy in and of itself is not a good, as the opposition seems to think.
Democracy is attained, as I've already talked about, when you achieve representation. Electing somebody in government isn't the same, like getting that majority vote isn't the same as truly being representative. Because you have governments that choose to oppress other people's voices, to impose their own agenda, their own Muslim Brotherhood agenda on the population that doesn't want that as a whole. We support the Black Bloc because we support bringing democracy and representation to Egypt. Thank you.